What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Real quick before we start, we still have the drawing going on for the Metroid 3DS XL. Now we had uh, quite a bit of stuff that actually happened today since we were gonna talk about the pre-Tokyo Game Show conference for Sony. There was no really big announcement as we were thinking there'd be, uh, but there were a lot of other really cool smaller announcements that we'll go over here. So if you missed the stream, don't worry, I'm gonna go over some of the highlights. And we also have uh, another store kind of going the way of say Circuit City with Toys R Us filing for bankruptcy protections. So let's get started today. So the pre-Tokyo Game Show stream happened uh, at 3 a.m. Eastern my time. I was up and we streamed it and everything. And while we didn't see any of the big announcements we were thinking we were gonna see, um, there was a lot of hints and alluding to as to be some you know, massive announcement or something here. Um, I'm gonna focus on the stuff we did see and I'm sure you guys will have all kinds of comments anyway about what we didn't see. But let's, uh, let's talk about what we did see here. Now the big one is Monster Hunter World. That's kind of what they capped everything off with at the end um, as they were kind of leading up to it. They, I guess they saved their big announcement for the end which was Monster Hunter World is coming out January 26 of next year. That's sooner than I thought. See, I thought we'd see it at the end of February, uh, maybe early March at the latest, but no, we're getting it seriously a month almost exactly after Christmas, January 26, 2018, and they follow that up with what I think right now is the best looking special edition PlayStation 4 Pro. Happy they didn't go with a slim, happy they went with the Pro. Looks really nice. It's glossy black, and then you have a matte black, uh, the matte black dragon on the front with the accents of like fire red kind of on on there and then the controller looks great i love the red that they used here and it, it's just a very pretty very pretty looking special edition my problem here is if i did buy this which by the way this special edition comes out uh, a month and a half before the game comes out it launches december 7th my problem is if i bought this i probably wouldn't open it up i'd probably leave it in the box because this looks like something i would buy as a collector's piece so it's harder for me to uh convince myself to buy this thing um also i already have a ps4 pro but it's very cool looking if you don't have a PS4 and you've been thinking about getting one for Monster Hunter Worlds, uh, this Pro looks like it would be the one to get if you're a Monster Hunter fan. It's, it's just a very, very nice looking piece. Odd that it's coming out before Monster Hunter, but maybe they want to beat the holiday rush and have it out before Christmas time. They did say it's going to be very limited. I also don't know if it's releasing here in the West. I just, they, as far as we know right now, December 7th in Japan. And I guess if you want one, you gotta make sure you pre-order it at your retailer or even online. Now they also showed a, a just a slew of games in big sizzle reels, some of them we already knew about. And then they also showed us one that I thought was very interesting that I picked out here that we didn't know about called Left Alive. It is a Square Enix game, which was interesting right away when I saw this. And according to them, it's confirmed as a survival action shooter. And it's, it, you may notice the artwork. It's the same person who really did the artwork for Metal Gear Solid, Yoji Shinkawa, and that is interesting enough as it is, because that means maybe the lore is going to be not similar to Metal Gear Solid, but obviously it's going to have the same, same, uh, like concept art look and maybe it's along the lines of that kind of universe. I'm not saying it's gonna be the same as that, but the fact that Square is doing it, they have this artist hired, they know what the look's gonna be like. They know it's gonna look similar to Metal Gear Solid with the concept art and just the artwork in general. Like if they have a special edition, this artist is gonna be doing some cool, cool drawings for that and that'll be really interesting to see. If it comes with like an art book, I would get the special edition of this game just because his artwork was so cool for Metal Gear Solid. Good looking game though, we just don't know much about it. As far as we know right now, it's just a survival action shooter made by Square. So we'll have to keep an eye out to see really any other information. As far as we know, it's just coming out next year and we don't have any kind of release date other than that, but the trailer at least gave us something to look forward to. Now they also of course showed us more information about Final Fantasy Dissidia. They did uh, fix up the UI. Now, if you were in the beta, there was a lot of feedback, a lot of complaining about the UI and how it just wasn't very intuitive. It didn't look very good and got in the way sometimes. Well, apparently they fixed that. They showed that off and they showed off a new character with Noctis from Final Fantasy XV. He will be entering the battlefield here, which is really cool to have him added in since the Final Fantasy was so new with XV. It's nice that they're adding him in since he is the character that's probably the most fresh in these people's minds. I know obviously Cloud, Sephiroth, Squall, you know, the, the basics, but now you have Noctis in there who is really the the newest addition to Final Fantasy. Cool to see. I also like to see that you know there was some actual result from beta feedback like it that beta actually 
to help them he heavily since the UI would have had to have been fixed after it came out and then they would have had to have really thought long and hard if it was worth fixing that since they already had it released and it was so established. I'm glad that the beta had some good effect on this game. Now they also hit us with one of those same day releases. What I mean by that is they announced it and then it was available right away and that is Final Fantasy 9 on the PS4. We saw a rating in Europe for this. Remember how we had that rumor that came out that's like whoa Final Fantasy 9 got rated. This was just ahead of this conference. Well yes, it was released on the PlayStation Store that same time during the conference. Now, as far as I know, it was released in Japan. I have not checked my PlayStation yet to see if it's released here in the West as well. Um, but it was apparently released in the Europe Store as well for the European uh, gamers. So I'll have to check to see if it's released here. As far as I know, it was released right away, pretty much after the conference concluded on the Japanese servers. Maybe it does follow up on the Western servers, you know, hours later. But what's interesting here is it has a bunch of the features from the Steam version. If you have not played Final Fantasy IX on Steam, it's a good looking version. They took, you know, the regular version, smoothed it out, fixed up some of the backgrounds, um, but they added a bunch of other things. And apparently it's going to follow through with the PlayStation 4 version, including trophy support with share functions. So you can, of course, you know, share screenshots or stream right through the PlayStation 4 service. Uh, and they also added boost functions, which is interesting because it's things like high speed mode. So you can blast through the battles quicker, uh, quickly. You can actually turn off encounters completely which is interesting and they added a uh, pause screen auto save and of course they added the high resolution characters so they look better on your HDTV and uh, cutscenes were also upscaled. Now if you have never played Final Fantasy IX this is a great chance to get into it. It's an awesome game. Some people even regard it as their favorite Final Fantasy. Of course everyone has their favorites but I can say uh, Final Fantasy IX is it's closer to the top of Final Fantasies. Uh, definitely worth a purchase and check out. Now let's just jump right in to this very interesting news. It definitely affects most of us who grew up, especially in the 90s, and of course, who has maybe uh, gone toy shopping at all in the past uh, 10, 15 years. And that is that Toys R Us may be going the way of say Circuit City or, or any other big box stores. While their situation is different, when you file for bankruptcy, it's not good. And that's what they're doing. They're filing for Bankruptcy Protection Chapter 11 in order to help relieve some of their debt. If you don't know, Toys R Us was left over with a ton of debt after an acquisition years ago for $6.6 .6 billion. They are left right now, and I'm not kidding, with $4.9 billion, $4.9 billion in debt, $400 million of which was coming up as being due with interest next year. So they had to figure something out here because if they can't pay that and they default on it, there is a major problem. They will just go away completely. So they had to get out in front of it and they're filing chapter 11 bankruptcy. Now apparently this is gonna free up $3 billion in financing that they can use for the holidays to stock stores and really try to make a good holiday, right? Just do whatever they can to make a ton of money this Christmas and start paying down loans, things like that, because they were left with so much, so much debt after that acquisition that they are in trouble now from years and years ago. I mean, $4.9 billion in debt is nothing to sneeze at for any big corporation. That is an issue. Following up from next year with $400 million, then the following year, 2019, $1.7 billion again of that debt is then due. So you have $400 million one year, and then the following year, $1.7 billion, and they're not making enough money to pay that. Now, several analysts have said they would have been very profitable every year if it wasn't for this debt that's been weighing them down. So this seems like more something they could at least try to jump out in front of, get it figured out. Because if they can get their debt paid down and really get rid of it as best they can, they will actually be able to operate as a, at a profit going forward, which is great because big box stores are already struggling. This is a store that was at least profitable without this debt. So it's not like they have been not profitable. You know, if it wasn't for this debt, they would be completely fine. But of course, you have places like Amazon showing up and really hurting them at this point because people just shop online for the most part. Now, uh, Toys R Us is not like a saint of a company, obviously. Some people have bad opinions of them. And of course, they also squeezed out a lot of smaller stores like KB Toys, a place that I remember in the mall around here a long time ago where I would buy Power Ranger stuff back when I was little. Um, that was a great store, but Toys R Us squeezed them out and eventually acquired them. So it's not like Toys R Us is going around helping stores or anything. It's business, they have to deal with it. Um, but I wouldn't expect Toys R Us to go away. I saw people online saying, oh, that's the end of Toys R Us. Actually, this is more of a restructuring to last longer. So this is something that will help them be around for the foreseeable future as long as they can get it all restructured and have a plan going forward to pay this debt down. Next up, let's talk about Netflix on the Nintendo Switch, a feature a lot of people want on their Switch because, well, at this time, a lot of people spend time on their PS4 or even their iPad, for example, watching Netflix, whether you're on the go or you're fronting your TV, TV, 
Netflix is probably one of the most watched apps ever. That's what we all do. We sit around and Netflix. But in this case, we don't have it on the Switch. Well, according to a Netflix customer service rep, it's ready to go. Like it's ready now for the Switch. And they're just waiting for Nintendo's approval, which tells me Nintendo is, um, well, they're holding off on it for some reason. If this is true, because as far as I can tell, this may still be a rumor. Um, it seems like a customer service rep just told a user online, specifically on Go Nintendo, that uh, yeah, it's ready to go. We're, we're good. I, I don't really know how much a, a customer service rep actually knows about this. Um, but as far as they can tell us, it's ready. Net, uh, Netflix is good to go on the Switch. And Nintendo seems to be the one holding this up. Why why would they hold this up? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, it seems like it's just extra functionality for the system, um, unless Nintendo really is just trying to be like, hey, this is a game system first. Um, we'll wait for any of the net, you know, the streaming apps to show up till next year. Very odd though, because it's something you'd like to say, hey, look, you can watch Netflix portably, you know, go get that system. It's just something extra to have. Next up, we have some quick updates around the Flog emulator on the Switch. Remember how we talked about Flog and it was like, uh, it was this golf game that was kind of emulated on the Switch with Joy-Con controls. Well, apparently uh, uh, some of the people who are data mining it right now have figured out a few things about it. I'm going to pass this along to you just in case you want to do your own experimentation on the Switch to try to get it to launch. Now, a while ago a user did post that they were just randomly, this is a while ago, this is back in July, that uh, randomly golf showed up on their Switch. And a lot of us made fun of them for it back then. I think it was on GBA Temp and then it showed up on Reddit. A lot of people just made fun of them because they were like, oh, you're just messing with us. Well, now we find out that there is an emulator and a game just hidden on the Switch right now, right? Well, apparently, according to, like I said, data miners, well, apparently it's, ac it's accessible on July 11th, which is the same day as th for the passing of Mr. Awada, which is pretty interesting right there. And apparently there is some type of Joy-Con motion that lasts 1.5 seconds. So some way, some motion, some people said maybe a golf swing. <laughs> uh, apparently if you set your clocks to July 11th, you too can play around with it and try to get it figured out. Another piece of interesting, uh, well, interesting findings here is that apparently it takes place in the news menu. So it's launchable from the news menu as some kind of Joy-Con motion, whether it's swinging or or uh, or the, the motion that you do on the Switch, uh, the Switch commercials and stuff. I don't know, but uh, it's very interesting to see. At this point, everyone's trying to figure it out. Don't be surprised if we know how to launch Flog uh, by the end of this week, which is kind of cool. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the crossplay for Fortnite. I did a video on that over the weekend. Um, well, there is an update. It looks like, yes, they did accidentally leave a configuration in place for PS4 and Xbox One users to communicate and even play against each other in Fortnite, as I was kind of uh, figuring after we saw a lot of proof. Well, it looks like they fixed that. Uh, apparently, yes, it is It is that easy to make this happen. Apparently, it always has been, according to Epic Games. And what's interesting here is it seems like it may have been Sony who asked them to turn it off, considering even Phil Spencer himself said, I would have liked to have seen them leave it on, like leave the configuration in place for there to be crossplay. So I guess the assumption that Sony is completely against crossplay is still going on. Um, interesting that it's that easy. And that maybe in the future, as some people are now saying, coming out and saying, crossplay looks like it might end up being a thing uh, later on this year. Some people are getting promotional material from their stores that say, hey, read up on crossplay. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we are really this close to there just being crossplay between the PS4 and the Xbox One because Microsoft is pushing heavily for it. Uh, it just seems to be Sony who's kind of like, eh, you know, I don't know if we're going to do this, especially since Nintendo is all for it. They're already about to start playing with them in Rocket League and Minecraft. So, uh, if it's this easy as we keep seeing, Sony just has to say yes, and we'll have crossplay tomorrow, apparently. And that's it for Newswave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me about, think about any of the stuff we talked about today, whether it is the Tokyo Game Show uh, press conference that we saw from Sony, the, the pre-TGS uh, press conference, I guess. What did you like from there? What didn't you like? Um, did you like the Monster Hunter announcement for the release date? I think a lot of people were taken kind of off guard by how early it was, and did you like that PS4 Pro for Monster Hunter? I did. I think it looks awesome. We also had a really cool-looking Dynasty Warriors PS4 Pro uh, or PS4 Slim, but man, that Monster Hunter one looks looks really, really good. Also, let me know what you think about Toys R Us uh, filing for bankruptcy. Do you have a lot of good memories or do you have bad memories from Toys R Us? I feel like we'll probably get some people who went there as kids that are real excited and then we'll get the employees who probably downright hated it at times. That's it for now, guys. I'll see you next time.